Welcome back, everyone. Today we have a very special video. It's not going to be arena gameplay. What's going on? What's going on indeed? Well, have I quit the arena? No, <laughs> not quit the arena. It's going to be a new video tomorrow, but uh, I wanted to try something different there. So we're going to talk about War of the Spark. Well, not really. We're going <laughs> to look at some cards which I would like to see in War of the Spark. Because War of the Spark is the coming expansion. And there's said to be 32 new Planeswalkers. I think that's a little bit problematic. Uh, and there's also some other problems, uh, one might say, in the current metagame. So I wanted to create cards which I know won't be printed. Yes, uh, there's no chance of these being printed. But cards which I would like to see... Uh, maybe they won't be printed exactly this way, but maybe they will print cards which are similar to this. So, uh, yeah, and also, if you want to create cards like I did, if you want to do the same thing, then there's a link in the description to a site. I have no, no connection to that site uh, whatsoever. Just, I thought it was a pretty sweet site. If you want to create cards, I would do print out and play in, I don't know, some... <laughs> I guess someone's, someone who's very nice and allows you to play with the photocopied cards which are not even legal in any format <laughs> but you can also just link them maybe uh, in the comment section so let's jump into the first card Grigorth the silencer is the first card and I wanted to create a planeswalker which is good against planeswalkers why did I want to do that well because there's a deck called Esper Control, the Sissy Wussies. <laughs> and I wanted to have some way of protecting against the Sissy Wussies going out of control because uh, there used to be a deck archetype called Super Friends, which just ran so many planeswalkers and just removal, and that was horrible to play against. So I wanted to have a card which is very good against that type of deck, the kind of Esper deck where you don't run creatures, but it's kind of horrible against, you know, any other planeswalker deck. I don't, didn't want to really kill off the planeswalkers if you run creatures alongside them. So that's why I created a planeswalker. Because then you can attack the planeswalker and kill it with creatures, but if you don't have any creatures, you're kind of screwed against this guy. Uh, so it's a two loyalty planeswalker, and that's also important because I didn't want it to get countered. <laughs> because they usually have absorb, so they could probably counter it otherwise. That's why it's so cheap, but that's why I also needed to, you know, draw the power level way down on this card, way down. It's only good against one type of deck. Uh, so the plus two, it comes in with two loyalty. Plus two, as long as Drigoth the Silencer has four or more loyalty counters on it, players cannot activate Planeswalkers, loyalty abilities. So it shuts down itself and shuts down every future Planeswalker that you will play on your side, but it also shuts down your opponent's Planeswalkers. And your opponent needs to either bolt this or attack into it or do something uh, to stop it, and they can do it. If they're a normal deck, they can do it. But if they're Esper Control, they can't do it. Too bad, huh? Too bad, Tavari. Too bad. Uh, it also has a minus two ability. You exile it, and you return it to the battlefield under your control with one loyalty next turn. That's kind of a way to protect it if you know that there's creatures coming in. It's a little bit of a cute trick, and it's mostly to give it a very slow way of cycling it, because you can do the minus two, and then it comes back to with one more loyalty. The only thing you can do is the plus two, but since you don't have four loyalty counters on it, uh, it doesn't really have any abilities. You just, you know, gain the plus two. And then you can add a plus two again to lock out Planeswalkers, or you can minus three to cycle it and draw a card. So that's uh, the idea behind this Planeswalker. I think something like this would be pretty sweet if they printed a anti-Planeswalker Planeswalker. Uh, that's what I would like to see. Next card is a card which solves a problem which I, I think everyone has <laughs> all the time. You don't find the mana, or you find too much of the manas. And this kind of solves it, in a way. Uh, I wanted to have a card uh, which you could play in any color, which searches for a basic land card, but I did not want to break the game <laughs> in any way. So I think I made it this how. It's a little bit weird. It's a, You pay one colorless, and it's a sorcery. I don't think we've seen this before, ever. Uh, so it's a bit of a unique card. You search your library for a basic land card of any type that you already have in play. So this makes it so that you can't fix your mana with this. Because I didn't want you to fix your mana. Really. I just wanted to make you able to get one more land card if your land screwed. So that's what we can do with this. And it would be kind of horrible if that was the only effect. But it also has one colorless. Exile gifts are given from your hand. Draw a card. Uh, because I didn't want to <laughs> make this a mainstay in a storm deck. I didn't want it to buff the drakes in the drakes decks. I wanted to, you know, exile the card so that it doesn't interact with the deck in any way. If you go for that uh, cantrip kind of way of using it. So this is something which I 
think would really fix a lot of problems that I'm running into. Like, let's say you're a aggro deck or something. You could run, uh, or maybe a mid-range is better. A better example. Let's say you're a mid-range. You run 22 lands and 4 gifts are given. That's almost like running 26 lands in your deck. Uh as far as consistency goes, because you're gonna draw either the gifts are given or a land. So you're going to be able to fix your mana, it's going to be a little bit slow. You can take a little bit of a punishment, uh, by, because you have to pay, uh, pay that one mana. But at the same time, you will at least be able to fix your hand, and you will be able to play a real game of magic. Because that's one of the problems, I think, with magic, is when you don't get to play a game of magic, because you're land stalled, or you draw too many lands, and... Uh, if you have gifts are given, you don't have to run as many lands in your deck still. You can run a little bit fewer and still get away with a gifts are given. But at the same time, it won't help if you're a, uh, for instance, a mono red 13 land deck. It won't help that deck too much, I don't think at least, because they're not going to be able to go down to, I don't know, 9 lands and 4 gifts are given, because then they're not going to be able to draw a single land. And then, you know, they're not even going to be able to cast their gifts are given. Uh, so something like this would be something I would very much appreciate if they ever printed. And I think Wizards is a little bit on to this. They've already changed the algorithm two times, the uh, you know the initial draw algorithm, so that you now draw three hands and then it selects uh, the one which has the most average weighted uh, average mana cost compared to your deck's mana cost. It's a, bit, a little bit complicated. I don't know exactly what it means, but it tries to give you a reasonable hand, uh, something like that. So, the next card then, Shape Steel. Uh, I wanted to give uh, here. I wanted to give every color a unique card, which solves kind of a problem that color has. So for blue, it's always been in Magic a problem for them that I can't really deal with uh, green decks. I mean they can, but green deck has green decks have always had creatures which has hexproof, uh, and they have uh, can't be countered. And they are always bigger than the blue creatures. So I wanted some way to, for blue to get back on green without giving them more counter spells because that's already horrible to play against. So I don't want to give them more of that. I want to give them something unique to deal with that. That's why I gave them this enchantment. Three mana, three blue. Your creature's powers is equal to the highest power among creatures that your opponent control minus two as long as they control any creature. So it doesn't work if they don't have any creatures. You don't, you know, gonna get zero minus two or, you know, minus two power. Uh, it's not gonna work against small creatures. If they're two power, you're gonna have zero power. But if they have something like a Galta, for instance, well, <laughs> they're gonna turn your entire team into, like, ten tens. And you're gonna just attack in and win. Uh, so it's a very good and tricksy way, which I feel like it suits Mono Blue to have something... A kind of a tricksy way to win against those kind of decks. And then just have uh, two blue, sacrifice, shape, steal, draw a card, just so that you can cycle it if uh, your opponent plays a 1-1 one, one and doesn't play a creature again, for instance. I have some way of getting rid of this. Next card is Frugald, Protector of the Land. I don't know if there's ever been a card like this, uh, but this is kind of the green ways of protecting you against one wrath. Kind of. Or any number of wraths, really. Like, if your opponent only runs wraths, or if your opponent only runs creatures and no removal, then this is really good. Otherwise, it's probably not that good, honestly. Creatures you control have indestructible, and whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability that an opponent controls, it loses indestructible. So it dies to all removal in standard. All of it. Uh, and even if you don't want to target Frugold, whatever you target will, you know, will die. You can still remove whatever you want to, but you can't wrath over it, because everything is indestructible, you need to actually target. So if you have non-targetable spells, like for instance, I have in my uh, uh, my gate stack, for instance. I have Gates Ablaze and Kai's Wrath, and this will protect against that, but it will still die to all normal removal. So that's something I would uh, like to see green have. That would be pretty cool, I think. Next card, Mana Bolt. And this here, I've introduced a new keyword, which I call the Mainstay. This card cannot be sideboarded in or out, because this card is very, very strong, but it's only strong in one matchup. And I think, as I said before, I'm really concerned that Ward the Spark, it's gonna just spiral out of control because there's too many Planeswalkers. And I think that we need a lot of ways to be able to deal with those Planeswalkers. So let's have a look at this. Mana Bolt cannot be countered. Because we're up against Planeswalkers again, so remember, Esper Control is just gonna counter this if it has, can, you know, if it can be countered in any way. 
And then it has Monobolt deals 5 damage to each Planeswalker. If it will kill a Planeswalker, exile it instead, and it deals 5 damage to that Planeswalker's controller. So it's super amazing against Planeswalker. Super duper duper amazing against Planeswalker. Then I choose 5 just because it needs to kill Teferi if it pluses. That's why, that's why it shows 5 there. But it is mainstay, so if you're up against a green deck, for instance, a green aggro deck, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing, and you can't sideboard it in or out. So you can't, you know, only bring it in in the Teferi matchup. You need to have it in your deck, you know. You need to sacrifice for that matchup. But if something happened, if, for instance, in War the Spark, every deck becomes a Planeswalker deck, well, maybe. Main, you know, main deck the Monobolt and just own them. This kind of contains the meta in a way, and I think you should have really strong threats, which are really good against certain cards, but which is, you know, utterly useless against other cards. And I think that's a very good way of uh, keeping the meta game fresh, because then there's gonna be like, oh, everyone's playing Monobolt now, so now I play without Planeswalkers, but then everyone stops playing Monobolt, and it's like, you know, the meta game just go round and round and round. That's a very healthy meta game, and that's uh, that's what I tried to create with this card. Next card. The last day. I wanted to give Black... Well, I wanted to give them Damnation, to be honest. Uh, but they're probably never gonna reprint that. I don't know why, what they have against that. Uh, but Black don't currently have a really good Wrath effect. We have Ritual of Soot, which is decent. But it's just a shitty Kai's Wrath, to be honest. Uh, not really good in... It's like what we have to play, but we, but we don't want to play. So we wanted to give Black a really, really good Wrath, but I also wanted to not give access to all the other colors, because if you splash, for instance, if you're an Esper control deck, this is a little bit, at least a little bit tricky for them to run, uh, because it costs four Black. And also, it's a discard your hand, so an Esper control deck probably doesn't want to discard his entire hand. Uh, that's the drawback that I gave this card. And then has, has destroy all colored non-land permanents. So you can deal with planeswalkers, you can deal with enchantments, things which you usually can't deal with, but you will destroy everything that you own yourself, which might not be a problem. It might be indestructible, for instance, or uh, you might have something that you can recur from your graveyard. And the discard might not be the worst for you, because maybe uh, you have something that you can recur from graveyard, maybe a reassembling skeleton or something that you... Uh, can recur. So it's very black theme, and I really like this kind of card. I don't know, it probably may be overpowered, I don't know. Uh, but something like this would be really, really cool, I think, uh, to see in Border Spark. Next card, Blessed Light. Yes! I love life gain, and I wanted to create a really strong life gain card, which at the same time doesn't really break anything. So it's very simple, it's just two white, you gain ten life, which I don't think is overpowered necessarily, but... It would be very strong against uh, Mon Red, so that's why I gave it Mainstay. Uh, this is the ability that I talked about before. You cannot sideboard it in or out. You need to have it there. So it's, for instance, horrible against Esper Control. And like Mono Green Agar is probably just buying you maybe one more turn. So it's only good against those very aggressive matchups. But you can't sideboard it in or out. So you need to choose, like, do I want this in my deck? Do I not want this in my deck? And yeah, I think that's, that's very interesting. And now we're back! Drigarth, the silence. That is all the cards that I have come up with so far that I wanted to see. Uh, but now I'm interested in hearing from you. Uh, if you're interested in creating your own cards, check the link in the description. And I think, I don't know exactly how it works, but I think you can link them in the comment section as well when you created them. Thanks so much for watching. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow with more arena gameplay.